All right, in this video, what we're going to cover is adding simple and variable products or single and variable uh, variable products. So under the products tab, so under the WooCommerce tab is kind of where we can see orders. We can manage coupons, look at reports, uh, configure the settings page, which has these different tabs at the top. Look at the overall status and examine the extension. So this is kind of the representative representative of the admin section of the cart. The products are going to be isolating or, or, or a section that just isolates the products themselves, the categories the products belong in, any tagging you want to use with the products, and then really what we're going to cover here is the attributes and how that relates to um, variable products. So when we think of attributes, the best way to think of this is drop-down lists that you present to the user to make selections on your products. So two of the most common ones are going to be things like color. And when you say add attribute, just think of what you're doing is you're adding a bucket. And then inside of the bucket are items which are going to be the list. So basically in the color bucket, we're going to have a list of different colors. And then we're also going to do size. So you see this a lot with t-shirts, for example. And under configure items, so what I just did there is I added two attributes or two buckets, one for color, one for size. And in color, I'm going to make my list of colors that I want to be available. So uh, kind of the rule here is go ahead and add every potential color that any product might have. And this is going to be a list that you can reuse on different products in the future and choose which colors um, you want. You can choose all of them. Or if this particular product only has two of the 10 potential colors across your site, um, at the product level, you can choose just those two colors. So I encourage um, everyone to go ahead and add all the potential um, combinations of colors that you'll have here. So we're just gonna um, do some simple ones. We'll say red, white, and blue. And if I go back to attributes on the left here, you'll see that I have color as a bucket and inside I have red, blue, red, and white, red, white, and blue. Um, I'm going to do the same under size. I'm going to hit configure items and do small. Medium. And large just for the example. And I guess I can go ahead and really dial it in, make another attribute and call it shirt type. And let's pretend that we have a t-shirt option and a polo option. So again, what we're doing here is all we're, is, is just simply configuring and building lists. And again, these are going to be um, lists that manifest themselves as drop downs on the product page by the add to cart button so the user can select the right color, the right type, the right size. Attributes are also needed whenever you have the use case where that selection that a user would make changes either the picture or the price and or the price. So if both change you need it, if one or the other change you still need it. That's what gives the mechanism to assign a different picture to a large red shirt and maybe a different price because it is a large or polo versus t-shirt. The polo options are probably going to have a higher charge than the t-shirt, for example. So, but anyway, all we're doing at this step and under the attributes area under the products tab is simply making the lists and the options, all the potential options that there could be. So let's say that, you know, another option is a hoodie. Um, with some other products. So I'll just kind of enter that in there. I'll, I'll do that with the other items as well. Under uh, color, I will add green. And under shirt type, oh, oh, oh. under size, I'll add extra large. And again, I'm not going, I'm, I'm going to intend now to not use some of these, but that's perfectly okay. So again, the exercise here is make your bucket of things that will have 
uh, lists inside of them and go ahead and list out everything you think you'll need. If you find later that you need an option that isn't available, you just come back to this area and either add a new attribute or add to um, a list of terms uh, that already belongs to a current attribute. So, for example, if a new color of shirt comes in, you can always go back here and add it and then make use of it in your cart. So now that we have these um, done first, and that's important that we get those done first so that we can use them later, um, we now go to add new. And you'll have a new button at the top and you see different uh, post types, that's what WordPress calls them. And you would choose new product, you could add new under products, both get you to the exact same spot. Um, and again, so we have simple product and variable product are the two that we're going to go over in this video. Um, group product and external affiliate product we'll, we'll do in another video. But right now, simple and variable. So simple is just that. It's very straightforward. We're going to put in t-shirt um, uncategorized isn't really, you know, I'll just say apparel is... Um, a new category that I should have added under categories, but I can add it here. If I want to add a picture or description to that category to make use of it elsewhere in the cart, I need to open the category section and then inside the apparels category, I can add an image if I need to. But back to entering the product. So it's not virtual or downloadable. So we're, we're talking about products that will ship. Otherwise, if you do this, it kind of gets into um, the options of how do we deliver the file um, or downloadable item to the user. But we're just going to assume basic products and we're going to say our t-shirt is $15. No sale price, it's taxable. We'll go to inventory. I always suggest you give um, a SKU number to all your products. This managed stock here, it's totally optional. If you click it, you need to give a quantity. And if this quantity gets sold through the cart, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna send you a notice that you're out and it's going to prevent other users from adding it to their cart and buying it. If you turn this off, then that will never be the case. So just kind of think about your use case where the stock uh, management is needed. If you sell one-off items, like you know the, the picture is the item and when you sell it, it's gone, this is usually a good scenario. So you enable stock management, you only allow one to be sold, and then that prevents it from being sold in the future. In this case, we'll disable that. Um, under shipping, again, shipping is a kind of a different universe. It depends on what you're selling, how far it's going, um, what your margins are, what kind of specials you have. Is it tiered over a certain price? There's many, many different shipping options, but this is where you would enter the weight and the dimensions of the item um, if those if that information was relevant to some third-party shipping plugin, there's also the idea of shipping classes, which we can define, which is under the WooCommerce uh, settings area under shipping. I'll just kind of show you where that is. And you get this idea of shipping classes, shipping options, and shipping zones. Um, linked products, this is kind of premature unless you have other products already in the site. I suggest you enter products first and then come back and kind of uh, play with this tool. Attributes. So in this case, there are no attributes because we just have a simple product. Um, let's, let's just use this image as a placeholder image. Let's pretend that's a t-shirt. Um, Shirt description would go here, and this is really all you've got to do for a simple product. Give it a title, give it a description, categorize it, give it a picture, um, fill out the basic information, you know, like price, all that good stuff, and then you hit publish. And that at its basic form is going to um, make a product that one can add to cart um, for $15. And we've got, we've got options here of quantity. Um, and so that is a simple product. However, a t-shirt is oftentimes not a simple product. It's a variable product. And what we're wanting to do now is not just give this to the user. We want to give the user drop downs to say, hey, what size, what color, and what type would you like? So to do that, the first thing we have to do is say product data. We have to change it from simple to variable. 
Okay, and then that changes a few things. So notice how under simple the regular price goes or is there, but under variable it goes away. That's because there is no single price now. There's going to be a price potentially per variation. And we also get this variations uh, tab down here. So the inventory, the shipping, the linked products are going to be the same. The attributes now become a little bit more meaningful. So in the attributes tab, we're going to look at the drop down and we're going to see the different um, attribute lists that I have made. So that list right here, okay, corresponds to my attribute list under the products tab. Shirt, uh, shirt type, color, size, and we have that right there. So I'm telling this product, hey, I want to add the ability for the drop down of color to be available. So we add that. And it asks me, okay, do you want this visible on the product page? The answer is yes, because we want this to be a drop down presented to the user. Do we want to use this for variations? In this case, I'm going to say yes. That's because I intend on changing the price or the, or the image when you make a different selection. If you don't do this, then it necessarily doesn't become different variations. It just becomes a selector that you need to know to fulfill your order. So an example would be, let's say I've got small, medium, and large, and extra large, but it doesn't matter what size you need. It's all the same price. It's all the same color t-shirt. Um, I just need to know what size you need, then you would uncheck this so that it doesn't actually create different variations of the product. You just have one product in your inventory. It's all the same price. Sure, it comes in different sizes, but that's all you need to know. Um, them selecting a different size isn't going to change the picture or the price. Only when that's the case do you need to choose use for variations. Then it's going to ask you, okay, of, of the items in your list, blue, green, red, and white, which ones would you like to add? So I'm going to say, well, let's put them all in there, and but for green, okay? So that's what I was wanting to show you earlier. And then I'm going to hit Save Attribute. And now we have the color available to us. Then I'm going to say, let's bring in the shirt type as well. It's visible. I want the user to see a drop down. Yes, it will be used on product variations. Let's get them all in there and uncheck hoodie. Hit save. And then we'll bring a third one in of size and we'll add that and we'll add them all and we'll pretend that we're, we don't have any smalls left. So we'll just take that out. Or maybe small isn't relevant, maybe small is a size on some other product or, or whatever. We'll save attribute. Now, what we've got going on here, you can do some simple math. We have one, two, three options in the color. We have two options for shirt type, and we have three options for size. So three times two is six, six times three is 18. So there's technically 18 different products we can have, assuming you can get any variation in all the others. So if I can get a blue, medium polo, um, and you know, polo in all the colors and sizes, and a t-shirt in all the colors and sizes, we're gonna have 18 different potential variations. And that can kind of get annoying. Um, you know, if I were to add back in here hoodie, well now we have three times three, that's nine times three, that's 27 variations versus 18. So you can see the compounding effect if you need those drop downs to translate into a change in price or change in picture. So what we are looking at here is we've got, um, we're, we're gonna introduce the drop downs on this page of color, Oh, I lost my product page. Color, shirt type, and size. And these are going to be the options in each. Okay, so let me just make sure I'm saving that. And now when we go to variations, WordPress, I've seen this not be perfect, but WordPress gives you this really nice option, create variations from all attributes. So that's going to do the math that I just did a second ago. We should get 18 products that kick out with all the potential variations. Then we'll need to go in and change the price and or picture and different information on each. We can also change the description, but let me click on this and hit go. And it's saying, are you sure you want to do this? This will create a new variation for each and every possible combination of variation attributes and it'll only do 50. So keep that in mind. I think we're okay. We should only have 18 if this works. 18 variations added. So 
This just saved a lot of time coming up with all the combinations. And so now you have the opportunity to go in, and I'm just going to randomly assign different prices to make this quick. Let's see, where am I at? Okay. Just say $14 on that. Uh, I'm just going to do outrageous numbers so we can see the effect. And notice there's other things you can change on here, okay? Uh, each one is going to be treated as its own product now. So these are like basically, this is basically like the simple product form kind of embedded into um, another product form. And this, these are the idea of variations. Let's see, I've got 18 of these. Let me get going here. Notice this is where you would upload a different image. So obviously if you had the colors we're talking about, that would be your opportunity to upload, in this case, a red t-shirt, um, one of the large ones. But changing the prices should illustrate how it works when this all gets saved. Let's go back to the t-shirt we've got. Just take a look at it real quick before we save. Okay, so currently thinks it's out of stock. Let me see it changes here. Well, it looks like we had two pages. I'll <laughs> have to go through, okay. This is kind of an extreme example. I added in a lot of different variations, but I wanted to illustrate uh, the idea. Let me save changes. Okay, and once that saves, I'm going to go ahead and click update. And just go back to the inventory, make sure it's okay. All right, and so when I refresh this, awesome. So clearly, in one of the prices, I put in $33,000, $33,465, so it's a very nice t-shirt. Um, oh, and this is a CSS problem. You can see color, shirt type, size. Um, that's a problem on my end, actually. But here's your drop-downs. Blue, red, and white. Polo and t-shirt. Large, medium, and XL. And, and by default, uh, Word, WordPress is... Um, or I'm sorry, WooCommerce is wanting to show us, hey, this is the big uh, range or variation that you'll have with all these variations, but we'll find if I choose a blue, polo, medium, then there's the price, $34. If I change that to XL, changes the price. If I change this to T-shirt, changes the price. Oh, apparently the white extra large T-shirt is the really expensive one. So that's how you... Um, do product attributes and that's the useful case of them you know if they want to clear this and start all over they can um, and yeah I think that's kind of the the core to it if you want to go back here in here and ever edit okay hey it's time to add in the hoodie right you can And then you can go back to variations. I think at this point now you'll need to add it. And you can do a lot of adding. Uh, I didn't really go over this list. Um, and it's kind of outside the scope of this video. It's the variation that we're, we're after. But this is how you can add any variation. This is how you do it manually. Let's say we had a blue hoodie. Uh, large. And then we'd have to do this for all the different hoodie options. But if I save this, it 
we should have a hoodie option as a shirt type, but only in blue. Gotta give it a price. There we go, there's the hoodie. But you'll notice I don't get any other option because it only comes in large. Also, if I uh, go to color, I don't get any other option in color either because I chose hoodie. Now, if I go to polo, I'll get all the colors and I'll get all the sizes because those options exist. So that's how that, work, it, it, how that works if you wanted to just throw in a large blue hoodie into this lineup. Um, that's how you could do it. So. Anyway, I hope this um, was helpful and shows you how to use the idea of product attributes to introduce drop-down lists for the user and how that translates into using it in a variable product where you can create product variations from those attributes. So uh, that will conclude this video. I hope it helped and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.